Brian with Walnut Farm Bees here. The next video footage was taken yesterday uh, before the snow came in last night. So that's why you won't notice. It's the test yard. There's Paul line that wasn't treated. Last one was Harbo. They're alive. There's Gold West. Not thrilled about the temperatures out here, but they're alive. Here's one of ours. Didn't need treated. Oh, they're down on the bottom. There's a big cluster on the bottom. It's one of the controls. They were treated because the mic count got too high, but they're down there. There we go. Another one of the controls. It did have to be treated. My count was too high. And again, these were treated with oxalic acid. I think only two separate times, not multiple rounds or anything like that. There's another one of the controls. Mites were high in October, so it did get two separate treatments of oxalic acid. This one is not treated. Counts were not high enough. It's horrible. I have a small cluster on that one. This is a Purdue Mike Butter. Did have to do it. Here's a small cluster, kind of going down in. Not as small as it looks, but not massive. Purdue Mike Butter, small cluster. Did, yeah, actually, there's probably bigger than the last cluster, but it's not big. They didn't build up very good, but they're alive. They did have to be treated. Yeah, another Harbu, not treated. Mite counts were low. New mite biter did have to be treated, had a high count, but small cluster, but kicking. Golden West, there is a cluster down in there, down, down in the second box. This did have to be treated, but they're alive. Paul line, they're in there. Nice cluster going down in. This one also Paul line. Now I gotta say, having not really been digging through any bees since late fall, it was nice and it smelled good. Um, this was a test yard, 18 out of 20 are alive. The one we already said was lost mid fall there with the formic. Um, one more that had a high count that is uh, was lost. Everybody else for now is alive and looking okay. So I think you can say this does speak to genetics. There are some things I don't like about some of these lines personally, but um, they all did fairly well and probably better than average. So you might remember last year had 50 colonies get hit by pesticides and fungicides and we uh, tried to salvage by combining and putting new queens in 10 of those but they were pretty sick at that time and looks like we're down to six of those um, which is really kind of surprising itself because they all were in terrible terrible shape and we did give them those bee bites the probiotic um, which I'm going to do a summary on that on the supplements soon. Might be the one thing that those supplements are good for. And you can see one of the ones that died out of those. Obviously the mice got in there. So I got curious. As there are some production yards I haven't checked yet. Ones I have checked have been right on about the 90% survival like we typically see. Again, monitor for mites, but genetics play a big role. So uh, just checked another production yard that hasn't been looked at since late October. 33 colonies, 
there and 31 out of 33 are alive and doing well so uh, kind of reassuring you start to overthink it this time of year uh, but they still have plenty of honey on there um, two, the two that died one had extra honey I put it on one that was light but that's about it So for new beekeepers, someone early on or just considering beekeeping or someone who's frustrated with colony losses, like I talked about in the last video, um, I'm trying to say, uh, don't lose hope here. There are ways to handle this. Um, I think genetics plays a huge role in consistent quality over wintering, etc. Um, but certainly how you manage the colonies makes a difference. There are a lot of variables. I, I do not want to pretend that um, you put uh, a good resistant line of bees in an area and they will automatically survive. There are a lot of variables. If the area has heavy pressure uh, as far as what's surrounding you, heavy mite pressure, um, genetics that are not resistant surrounding you. Uh, that is often too much even for resistant colonies. They can succumb to that. So you've got that variable. You have the weather variable we talked about last week. And I mentioned uh, Randy Oliver's mite model. If you go out to scientificbeekeeping.com, you can get his Excel version. And in the Excel version, one thing that I like there, even though it's kind of a fairly complex file, is it does allow you to configure options based on what you're seeing in your local area. In other words, uh, how many bees, what kind of an area, uh, who's doing what for managing their bees, mite management, etc. Because the, the very basis of that is those colonies that I just showed you, if they were in an area that had very heavy mite pressure and low quality or poor quality as far as mite resistance genetics surrounding them, uh, the, the approach would have to be completely different. They wouldn't have gotten away with uh, no mite treatment, or at least more of them would not have. Um, so how we manage plays a role. Um, most of you know that if you treat for mites, I'm a fan of the organic mite treatments. There are a lot of different options available. Um, but be thinking as you go into the season about the role that genetics plays as well. It's not, uh, it's not a magical perfect answer to all the issues uh, nutrition location uh, weather but genetics play a significant role